everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI Optics Mag 34 2CQR. This is a 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor with 3440 by 1440 resolution. So we have our 21 by nine aspect ratio and our UWQHD resolution. MSI did send me the sample, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. Simple, straightforward design. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents besides the panel itself. First, we'll look at the quick start guide here. Very simple quick start guide with just key features and diagrams showing you how to get everything set up and running. Next, you'll see we have two kits right here. One's gonna be screws for the stand. The other one's gonna be if you need to use a different mount, if you wanna mount this to the wall or use your own stand, you have those options. Next, you'll see external power supply. Take a look at the specs right there with our barrel plug connector. Power cord right here. And then you'll see one included display port cable followed by both pieces of the stand. And this is gonna be metal construction there and then metal and plastic here. You'll also see cable management channel built in right there through the center. Now let's look at the panel. Looking at the backside first, you'll see MSI logo and branding right here. We got a little venting line up at the top. You'll see some optics curved gaming on this side with our branding. Then we have our mount on the back. So if we need to use a Visa mount, we have that included adapter, right? If you want to add your own mount or mount it to the wall. Next, you'll see technical information here. We're going to tip it up. You'll be able to see our two HDMI ports and our display port, power port right there. We got our audio jack as well. Then we'll look at it from the very bottom. All of our menu and control buttons there. Get a feel for how thick this is. It's curvature when you see it from the side. We'll do top down view as well. Look at it from the side. And then you'll see that curvature again. And now we'll look at it from the very front. You'll notice on this side, we have our key specs here, right? So 3440 by 1440 for the resolution, 144 Hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, RGB mystic light, night vision, wide color range, frameless design. So you'll notice the bezel-less design here at the sides and the top, but I want you to know that the pixels actually stop where the tip of my thumb is. So there is a black bar that will be there visually right there from the top. Maybe you can see that just depends on the light, get a feel for where it's going to end. MSI logo and branding down here and then all of our button icons as well. Now let's go ahead, let's get this thing set up and try it out. All right, so the monitor's all set up here. The stand was super simple, just three screws to attach the base to the arm, and then it just snaps right in the backside. This stand's great. You'll see we have height adjustment here. So there's our maximum height, minimum height, or we can land anywhere in between. It's under its own tension and weight. We can also tilt it back or tilt it forward, and we have a really good pivot here. We can swing it out to the left or to the right. So very versatile stand. Now in regards to rotation, we are not able to rotate it completely to give us that portrait view. We are gonna be in that landscape only, but depending on how level your area is, right? You do have the option to give a little adjustment to the left or to the right with this stand. So compared to a lot of stands that we've reviewed, it's nice to see one that's nearly fully functional. So the only thing it's missing is that complete rotation, but this is fairly common for 34 inch monitors. Cause again, due to the height and its length, it's hard to do that. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's nice that we have all the other options taken care of from tilt to height and to have that nice pivot and swivel. All right, so now you'll see the monitor plugged in, powered on and connected to our desktop PC. First thing I wanna show you are Windows Advanced Display Settings. We are getting the advertised resolution, 3440 by 1440 at 144 Hertz. 8-bit color for those of you wondering. So everything is working as expected there. Now let's take a look at the menu settings. So to pull up the menu, you'll hit the menu button first, and then you'll have different arrows you can use to navigate with the instructions right there. So you'll see first up we have gaming, 
and then we can enter into that if we want. And then we can browse the different options there. So pick and choose the settings that you want to tweak or enable. So a lot of options for you gamers out there. And then if we move back, we'll go to the next item down. It's going to be our professional settings. You'll see the options we have to tweak here, depending on what we're after. Next, we have our image settings. Input sources. We do have picture in picture and picture by picture, which is nice. So source size, location, display switch, audio switch, and then picture by picture, source one, source two, display switch, and our audio switch. Then we have our nav key settings there. And then you'll see all of our settings for the monitor. RGB LED settings, rainbow or off. And then our reset at the very bottom. You also notice up here at the top, we have some of our key settings as well. Display port, adaptive sync, HDR, our refresh rate and our resolution right there built into the menu for this monitor. Here's a look at picture and picture in action. So we have our computer as one of our display options and our Xbox as the other source and option right behind it. And then you'll see picture by picture right here with the Xbox on the left side of the display and our PC on the right side of the display. Next, I wanted to show you different image presets here. This is under the gaming mode section. So we'll quickly cycle through so you can see how the video is going to change depending on the preset that we have. Subtle differences, but they do make a difference. So get a feel for those options. I like the RTS one. Ooh, that looks good. And then under the professional and pro mode settings, we have some more presets too. Want to cycle through those again. So it depends what you're after and how everything's going to look and change. Pretty drastic differences between each one. So again, just pick and choose whatever one you think looks best for whatever content you're consuming or whatever game you're playing. Next, we're gonna look at a couple different UFO tests. First up is the UFO test to show us different frame rates. So again, we have 1440p at 144 hertz with three different frame rate values. 36 FPS at the bottom, doubling that to 72 FPS in the middle, and doubling that again to 144 FPS up at the top. The key takeaway here is to see how much smoother that footage looks going across the screen with that higher FPS value at our 144 hertz resolution versus the bottom value. That's going to be the key takeaway here. So if you have a system or console that can match the performance and spec of this monitor, you will see a noticeable improvement in the quality of gameplay and you'll just have a much better experience with your frame rates, seeing them a lot smoother on a panel like this. The next test is our UFO test. We're gonna do this one a little bit differently with a couple different settings turned on or off. First, you'll notice the screen flickering and stuff with the camera here looking at how we currently have everything configured, but I wanted you to be able to see this with our gaming mode and we have our anti-motion blur turned on and let me tell you, Pretty nifty what we're seeing here. That alien is perfectly in focus, very clear and crisp, but we're seeing tons of artifacts behind it. It's basically like we have six or eight of those UFOs trailing off. Nothing's blurred. It's like exact copies and replicas of it when we have it turned on. So the UFO is very clear and crisp and looks really nice with this setting on, but we're seeing tons 
of artifacts there behind it, almost like it's sputtering along on the screen, like we've copied it five or six times, almost like looking at yourself in a mirror with the mirror behind you, and that kind of goes on forever. Now we have that setting turned off, so anti-motion blur is turned off. We are seeing more blur here. It's not as clear and crisp, and I am seeing some smearing here. So if you're wondering about ghosting and what you can expect, it's not going to be non-existent on a panel like this. You are going to be able to see it, but you do have some options and controls if you care more about removing the blur, if you want to work on adjusting your response time. We have this currently set to the fastest setting right here that we have available for our monitor. So there's our response time set to fastest. I can bring it back down to normal. Doesn't look much different there. And then we got our zero latency mode. So a couple different options you can tweak around with. It's really cool to have the anti-motion blur. That setting definitely works, but it's up to you and what you prefer and like best as you're playing your games. And I guess what you can also tolerate as well. Next up, let's talk about our backlight bleeding. So we have a black screen up right now. We turned off all the studio lights in here. We looked at it with a critical eye and angle to see if we could notice any sort of light bleeding around the monitor. I'd say for the most part, the answer to that is no, but at certain angles, depending on how you're looking, and this is true for just about every 34 inch monitor we've looked at, a little bit up here at the top and the bottom, where that bend starts to be a little bit more pronounced. You'll find a little bit there, but again, you gotta be looking at a pitch black screen in a pitch black room and get the right angle. So basically non-existent and a non-issue with this monitor. Moving right along, let's look at web browsing with this monitor so you can get a feel for it in day-to-day -day use. When you have a 34 inch display like this, most websites are not gonna be optimized for that content. So you'll see a lot of borders here like we have on YouTube with their trending page. So everything's gonna be way more spread out. But look at this, everything looks nice, very responsive. Fantastic viewing angles, even for a VA panel. I love the curvature for that. So that looks nice. Then let's pull up a popular blog here. This is The Verge. So if you want to use this not only for videos and consuming content, maybe you want to catch up on reading some of the latest and greatest in tech news, all that good stuff. See how the images load. And again, depends if the website is optimized for this wider display. We can go ahead, let's just click on an article here. So here we go. Let's let it load. And videos look good, photos. No issues there. And then last but not least, our favorite e-commerce platform. So again, you'll see everything center heavy, a lot of white off to the sides, but look at this. The whole bar up at the top, we can see everything there. So that's gonna be the benefit of having something like this with that wider screen real estate. But man, things look nice. Very enjoyable. Next, I wanted you to see the RGB on the back. Again, it's rainbow or nothing. So here's a look at the rainbow effect as it just slowly cycles through and changes the colors. Very bright. I love that nice subtle touch to it. I do wish we had more of it in a way we could appreciate it even from the front of our setup. So I'm a big fan of RGB on monitors, but again, I think it's kind of a moot point since typically you're on the other side, never seeing it. And most of you probably have this up against a wall or things like that. So I'd like to have more of it and brighter. So at least it could cast a glow behind the wall, right? And illuminate it for us so we could see and appreciate it that way or work it into design elements more to the stand, the base and all around the monitor so we could actually fully appreciate it and integrate it into our gaming setups. Now it's time for my favorite test. We're gonna be testing out the input lag on this monitor. Now keep in mind, input lag is different from response time. This has a one millisecond response time. The input lag though is the amount of time it takes for your monitor to display a signal on screen from when your source sends it. So in this case, when our device sends it, when your console sends it, when your computer sends it to the actual display. So let's see what the results are. Up at the top, you're seeing about 1.6 milliseconds. That's right where we wanna be. Ideally, even lower. The lowest we see usually is that 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 even millisecond. So 1.5, 1.6 is not bad. You'll see now we're at 1.4, which is great. Then let's go to the middle. This should be in the eights. That's about right, 8.8, 8.9 milliseconds. And the bottom should be around 16. 
So you'll see we're right where we need to be, 16.2 milliseconds. So mid ones for input lag is awesome. Now let's talk about color. We use display cal here to get a feel for the color accuracy and representation on this VA panel. So first up, you'll see our sRGB coverage, 99.4% with our volume being 124.5%. Adobe RGB coverage coming in at 81.3% with a volume showing of 85.8%. And then last but not least, you'll see DCI P3 coming in strong at 87.6% coverage and 88.2% volume. And last but not least, it's time for gaming with this monitor. So we'll be looking at footage from Forza 5, Assassin's Creed, and Borderlands 3. Let's get right to it. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you console gamers as well. So first you'll see we have the PlayStation 5 connected. Current resolution 2560 by 1440 at 60 hertz. But I did go through the prompts here. You'll see them down below. We tested the 1440p output option. So that's what we're getting. And we also have 120 hertz output enabled. That'll just depend on the games. But as we went through our testing here, it was compatible at 1440p and 120 hertz. And don't worry, Xbox fans, Xbox Series X connected here. You'll see 1440p with 120 hertz for our refresh rate as well. So now where does that leave us with our MSI monitor? Well, let me share with you my final thoughts. I've reviewed a couple other 34 inch monitors and they all seem eerily similar to each other. VA panels, same resolution, similar if not identical refresh rate. So for this particular monitor, what sets it apart is the stand that's in included with it and the options that we get there and the Mystic Light RGB on the back. Also, I would say this menu setup is more uh, fine tuned to be able to configure things a little bit differently compared to the competition out there. So if you want a little bit more control, trying to adjust some of those settings for motion blurring, things along those lines, then you'll enjoy this monitor. It really feels like it's geared towards gamers First, beautiful display, great viewing angles, very happy with the colors. Overall, again, super similar experience to the other ones. It makes me wonder too, at the end of the day, where are these panels coming from? Not sure an easy way to figure that out in the future without maybe having to take it apart and try to find a part number. I'm not opposed to that in the future if that's what we need to do, but it makes me wonder if I'm looking at basically the same panel with just a different brand's label slapped on it, maybe overclocked a little bit, things like that. But I really like this MSI monitor. It's a solid choice. I will add one more thing though, if the price is right. Solid choice if the price is right. So for me personally, I like to shop based off of budget. Does it meet the spec that I want? And then where are we at in regards to what am I going to pay for it? So for me, compared to the competition, it really comes down to at the time that you're in the market for a monitor, 
what is it going to cost you and will that be worthwhile do you want this particular stand do you want this particular brand do you want to have rgb mystic light in the back do these specs work for you right 1440p 144 hertz one millisecond response time if so great go for it if not that's fine too find the one that works for you